In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, My dear ones, teachers and students, in today's Gospel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, addressing to the crowd, is talking about two very important things in our life. Faith and forgiveness. These two virtues are great virtues, but they are also very difficult to achieve. He is telling them to have, if they would have faith, and they would say to the mountain or anything to uplift itself and throw itself in the mountain, it will happen. So now, if we think about it, many people say, oh, this is a magic trick, right? No, it's not a magic trick. Literally, the man, because we have to first remember that we are created according to God's image and likeness. So literally, like if it, we imitate God and we are trying to be like him, because that's the whole point, right? To be like God. Not only to look, to have the look as we usually look like our parents, right? Not only to have the outside look, but also to have the inside look, right? The beauty of the soul, the beauty of the faith, to trust him in everything. So you can hear many people saying, oh yeah, I believe in God, yeah. But do we respond to God's requests, to God's commandments? So. In order to respond, you have to trust him. You have to believe in him, right? It's not an imaginary character, as you see in those uh, shows, movies, whatever, with Mickey Mouse and superheroes, right? <laughs> those are imaginary characters, but God is not. He is the creator of all. He is the beginning of all wisdom. He is the beginning of science, of anything that you can imagine. So, but in order to have that faith, first of all, you have to get to know him. Because you cannot put your faith in someone or something that you don't know. You just heard. You heard something, right? I can't tell you the, the Greek food is the best food, but you never tried it. You have no idea how it tastes. Would you believe me? Maybe, maybe not. You have to taste it first. You say, oh yeah, it is good, right? So the same thing with God, you have to taste him. This is why he called us, come and taste me. To understand him, to be able to communicate with him. Because only through communication we can get to know him and understand him. So, and the best way of communication is prayer. <coughs> and prayer is like you're listening or when you want to be heard. Right? You want something so bad and you're begging your parents, please, right? So you have a specific way of approaching when you want something so bad, right? Why don't we have the same approach with God? To be honest, to be sincere, to show our willingness that yes, we want to be with you. We want to be heard by you. That's something you hear people, like even the, the sign of the cross, they do, I don't know what they're doing. 
that's not the sign of the cross. The cross should be symmetric, correct, putting the three fingers together, the first, which means the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the other two, drawing the two natures of Christ, fully God and fully man, right? So this is the whole theology. And you put it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, not just doing something which is a blasphemy for those that are doing the, whole, the sign of the cross that way. <clears throat> it's just for the joy of the evil one. So, and he wants us to get this special relationship with him, to get close to him, to be able to understand him and be understood by him. And then, as a result, we will have the faith. We will have the trust. See, these, these two things, trust and faith, comes only when you get to know someone. If you don't know, you, you see someone the first time, okay, so he may tell you and may show you degrees and tell him about himself, but if you, you do not know him, how are you going to trust him? There is no way, right? There's no way. You can say the greatest thing about yourself, but by th with the time when you get to know each other and you see by his own acts, right, his own actions that, yes, he is what he's saying that he is, right? So the same thing, we have to get to know God and we have to prove to God that, yes, we trust you. Yes, we love you. Yes, we believe in you and in your divine providence. Not just words. Yeah, I believe in something. There is something. Well, that something definitely is not the God that created the universe. Because when you trust God, God has a name and we know him by his works. Because everything surrounding us is talking about God and God's presence and God's providence. So, there was a man that had four sons. And he was teaching them what is the right thing to do in life, to love God. But one, one day he decided to put them to test. So what he did, he gave to each one of them one fruit, a peach. So and he went to work. When he came back, he called the older one. My son, did you like the, 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 the peach I gave you in the morning? Oh yes, it was so tasty, so sweet, it was great. What did you do it? I ate it, I took the seed and I planted it that that way we can have another tree and have more peaches. Great. It shows me that you're going to be a good economist in your household. You know how to do things, great. He called the second son my dear son, did you like the peach I gave you in the morning? Oh yes, it was so good that I went and asked mom for more. Said, well, be careful, be careful because this is not a good sign. Because if you're not thankful with what you receive and you spend more that, than you receive, then you're going to be in financial and spiritual debt. So be careful. He is calling the third son. My dear son, did you like the, the peach I gave you in the morning? Uh, I don't know. I didn't taste it. I went to, and I sold it with uh, 10 cents. And I made 10, 10 cents out of it. So, well, it's good. It shows me that you're going to be a good businessman. But be careful because you can lose your soul with that. Not everything is to be sold. 
and especially the things you receive pro from your parents. So the gifts of God, you can't sell those, right? He went to the third, to the fourth son, said, my dear, how, uh, how was uh, the pitch I gave you? He said, Dad, I'm sorry, I don't know. There across the street is, is a boy which is uh, paralyzed, and I, I knew that he would enjoy it, and I went and I gave it to him. And he was pleased with his answer with, and with his action, because he had a big heart. He had love, first of all, for those in need for God's creation, for those in suffering, right? But if you love those in suffering, definitely you love God. So, and he understood that out of four, only one had love for God and for God's creation. Everyone did what they did in their own way, but only one chose the right, the right thing to do. So, now the question, I don't want you to answer me, but I want you to think about it. What would you do if you were in the, in the place of the, those four boys? Think about it. How would you react? How would you do? Would you share? Would, or what would you do? Just think about it. And I will ask you probably in one of the classes, Random, I will ask you, what is your thought about the question I addressed you during the church service? <coughs> so, definitely, it's something that we have to reflect, reflect onto, something that we have to think on a daily basis in order to imitate Christ, to become like Christ, to have the love, to have the trust, to have the faith in him, what shall we do? What changes have, have we to do? And where shall we start in order to make our heart soften? To make our heart, or to fulfill our heart with that love that he wants us to have towards him and towards his creation. So let us put our trust in God. Let us constantly ask, ask him to illumine our mind, to grant us the virtue of faith, the virtue of trust, the virtue, the virtue of love. Because, because with, without love, nothing of this cannot be possible. So many things we can enumerate, peace or mutual respect and so many other things, right? If there is no love, those things cannot be. So why, why is there war? Because of ego, right? Ego, what is ego? It's absence of love. So that's, that's the whole point. As the apostle said, if, if there is no love, there is nothing. Because love endures forever. If you love, no matter how hard it is, you still, you're being patient and you're praying you, and you're having faith that the, those individuals, people, whatever, they will change one day, right? Because you have love. But if you have, if you, there is no love, ah, I have no patience anymore. I give up, I can't take it anymore. Okay, I'm done with it, right? But when it's love, there is hope. So let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess the Trinity God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. God